All right, here we are in an undisclosed location in Wyoming. Here to check out um, a 1957 A120. So first off, thanks to Jim and Levi for the connection of this place. Um, it's a pretty cool place, I'll show you. But let's, uh, we're gonna try to load it up and take it home. So let me show you what we're up against. This is a gentleman's property who passed away, not sure how many years ago, but a number of years ago. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. And I guess it's been pretty thinned out already. First off, I'm super thankful for the weather. It's a... Uh, yeah, I think I see my path. I might come right down, but I'd have to back it up this whole way. We'll see. Yeah, I'm gonna have to back it out. Actually, I think I can. Come straight through here. But here she is. You know, it's like ranch beat, but uh, just dig this truck. Probably get, getting in over my head, getting into a uh, bare knuckle binder territory give him a lot of props he's he's helped me with a couple things a couple questions i've had it's not too bad hopefully it rolls um i don't have a lot of stuff i don't even have a winch I just have a hand. Anyway, so there she is, 57 A124 by four short bed. Still has the fresh tire chains. Um, I have some minimal supplies. We'll do our best. If I can't get it, I can't get it. But it's not too bad. Look at that, dude. Even has a key, IH key. 65,000 original miles. Feels like they're steering barely. She's gonna need some love, but all the, you know, Shield scratched up, but it's there. Back glass is broken, not surprising. So the uh, owner, she said I can dump this stuff out. So I'll probably just put in this poor Chevy bed. And, uh, but I gotta get going. I got a lot to do. Look at that wrecker. that C-series, yellow C-series over there. Some cool stuff. Anyway, this is my mission today. So let's uh, go get changed. Whoa. Go get changed and uh, we'll start getting her unloaded. we really look at it and see what we got ahead of us. I'm stoked though. Dude, these are a major flashback. These Pro Track 50s when I was in high school were like the the, the stuff, man. N5015. Mm. You got a janky muscle car with a set of 50s on the back. Rubbing in the wheel wells. Such crazy property, man. This is, I've seen bigger. I was just out in uh, Rapid City, South Dakota. 
know, this is, man, this must have been 40 acres of old cars. It was crazy. Here's my tow rig. It's a beautiful morning. And I hope we get this thing. I just hope it rolls. We'll see. And oh yeah, it's, uh, I forgot to, see if there's any writing on this door. I forgot to show you the, um, I wonder if you can buff glass out. Get these scratches out a little bit. But I love this grill. So supposedly 57, I'm trying to learn as much as I can about this thing. It's the first year for 12 volt. But it's pretty complete, man. It's got the windshield washer bag, rare item. See that filter right there? That I was asking the guys at the shop I had a picture of it. And we were thinking that those were available in the 90s, but I'm not sure. I think this is a silver diamond B240. I, I should have brought a battery. But it's not really part of my mission is to get it running here. I just don't have the time. So once I get it back to the shop. These are empty. I would like to, I'd rather pull it on the trailer nose up. So I could pull around this way and back the trailer in this way. I'll see if I can move, if these are all empty, I can move them. But we'll see, I'm gonna start unloading the bed. So be prepared for a lot of time lapses. I was gonna do this in the summer, but I was told that there's a lot of rattlesnakes out here. Like up in that hill right there, the owner, she said that the state discovered like a den with like 250, um, Rattlesnakes or something crazy, I don't know. Maybe she was just trying to freak me out. Well, let's get this thing unloaded. Cue time lapse. All right, so I figured I'd show you what uh, kind of stuff is in the back here. I've seen, like, f this is like the third or fourth hand winch. Come on, two, a lot of starters, a lot of electrical. I guess this guy built his own house, like everything on the property this guy built. Check this out. Savage pickaxe head, some children's toys, jerry cans. You name it, we got it. It's taking me a little bit longer because I'm not, I'm trying to be 
respectful and like put stuff in this Chevy bed or that Ford flatbed. Man, I I'm so, it's December and I'm so thankful for the weather. Check this out, dude. You ever seen the old triple piston bike pump? Someone must uh, want that. It's gotta be from the 40s, 50s. Pretty cool. Mega saw blade right there. Anyway, and I'm still thinking, I, I uh, started inflating this tire then I thought like, I'm gonna put a little bit of air in all the tires, but I, I wanna get these tire chains off because I don't want those on the trailer. Um, but these tires are like brand new. Like I said, it's in remarkable shape. It's just kind of ranch beat, which is cool. Um, anyway, I'm gonna put this pump on the front while we're uh, time-lapsing. Let's go. All right, so friend Levi joined. What's up, Levi? Thank you. Um, now we have an extra truck, which is opening up some possibilities. Uh, bed, got the, the whole bed liner, just to pour that whole thing out. It's kind of like a blessing, man. This floor is remarkably solid. Got the mega welding support structures. <laughs> but man, she's uh, looking better. All the tires officially have held air. Um, so I'm going to put a few more pounds in this one and then like I said what I think we're going to do is I'm going to pull forward Levi will hook his truck up and we'll, it does steer so we'll just back it up that way and that way then I'll back up to it because I don't want to put it on backwards so I think we'll just uh, cue more time lapse. Look at that big boy. This guy came out ready to ready to rock and roll. All right, yep. Got the chains off. Wheels are turning. Things are happening. It rolls, that's a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> or something. Well, that's good, man, it's rolling. It's rolling, it's going pretty good. This thing is sweeter than I thought. Got the F-150 power. Hold up, Jeremy. Hold up. That was a close one.
Go uh, slowly back, slowly. No, no, slowly forward. You're forward, yeah. Keep going. I'm just stoked, man. This thing rolls. Keep going. I'm just gonna get her straightened out here. Yeah, keep going. All right, that should be good. All right, now I'll back. Let's go take a look. Had it now that it's pulled out. This guy is just nuking. It's been like this the whole time. But look at that thing. I mean, how cool is that? It's got the perfect stance. I know, and there's like. Cool bumper. The bumper's not very strong, but it's super cool. All right, well, I'm gonna get the trailer backed up, and we're I'm grateful uh, Levi's here because I made it. That worked really well. All right, so we did it. Uh, thanks to Levi, oh, I would have been hosed without him. Um, but man, the truck exceeds expectations. Not only, I'm just not that familiar with these old trucks and uh, the build, Levi and I were commenting on the build quality, how the heavy duty things are. So I'm in the condition uh, overall is much better than I anticipated. So we're gonna load up. Thanks for watching, catch you next time. Next video, we'll, we'll, uh, will it run? We saw, we found a plate inside. I don't wanna open the door because it took forever to latch it. Was it 93? 93. 1993, so officially 30 years off the road. So, but it rolls over, it, meaning it literally rolls, the engine turns over. So we'll uh, go through the procedures and try to get her running. It has no brakes, but a lot, lot to work. Anyway, next time, see ya. All right, so we made it back a long, arduous road trip but it went well the a120 is looking great um and now that i have it up on the trailer i wanted to show you before i take it off the trailer uh just what it looks like underneath these things are this thing is super clean uh and it's just really interesting to see the evolution of not only like into the c and d series but uh the influence into scouts as well so let's go take a look so like it's just kind of cool like these are obviously like from, a, they used these in a Scout 800, which came out um, in like 66. So like that's a Scout 80 steering wheel. Kind of cool. And I love this. I know I showed you this before, but the original IH key. This thing needs like a ton of lube. I'm gonna cut this plow mount off um there's a crack here it's like welded but it's cracking again it's kind of interesting i don't know if i i can't remember what i shared and what i didn't share but it's like looks like a dana 44 front and axle closed knuckle 
looks to be in good shape. It's a four speed. I'm not sure what if it's a T98 or what was the model. Um, yeah, let me zoom out. But it does shift through the, the gears and the clutch actually works. It's not frozen. Um, but look at this. That shackle is on the frame. So it just tells you the bushings are shot. You can see like the center line of the bolt is here. And the, so it's worn into the leaf spring. So I'll have to try to, I mean, there's gonna be a huge to-do list on this truck on top, like in addition to just getting it running and driving. Cause it's one thing to just like do a will it run video and you know, like get the vehicle started and moving under its own power. But it's another thing if you're gonna wanna like actually take it on road trips and use it. Not sure what model rear axle that is, like the third member style, but it's a nice thick tube and it's full float, which is pretty rad. Cause this is, I believe like a half ton truck. But look at these cab corners. Remarkable, man. There's just like no rust. Even here, it's like this thing is just so cherry. Oh yeah, I was, I was wondering about the exhaust. But if you look, it's got the uh, invisible muffler. See the end of it there. It's got the really, I love the transfer case e-brake. It's all uh, operational. This thing's just in like, even though it was kind of used hard, it was like not used very much. Look at that floor pan. This thing's mint. And again, it does roll. This rear bumper, I don't know if you guys, if you old truck guys, if you've ever seen a bumper like this, I dig it a lot. Um, I hooked a clevis mount to try to pull it out from it and it was flexing the whole bed. So it's not, it's not super strong. But even down to like, you know, not in, yeah, it's going to be fun, man. But I, I think what I'm going to do is like, we're going to do, a. a a will it run video will be a part of this video so i'll do a longer this will be a longer video what's interesting is i didn't i didn't realize that this i don't know why this got all ripped here um but this i didn't realize this is the fuel tank it's a tiny fuel tank this has got to be like 10 gallons maybe 12, 12 gallons. It's definitely been out before. And I love it, it's got a drain plug. But uh, this has clearly been off at some point, like it's missing some bolts. It's missing a lot of bolts. But who knows, I'll probably end up pulling the front clip out see more old repair so it looks like the previous owner kept up on the the welding you know like inspecting it for cracks um but anyway i'm just super stoked i love these dual matic Like you pull these things out, but they're all frozen. I gotta, I gotta spend about a whole can of PB blaster and just soak everything down. That's a little spot of rust. One of the few areas of, of rust. But I'm just stoked on this thing. I gotta see if I got an emblem. If anybody has an emblem, let me know. Anyway. So next up, we're gonna unload it and we'll uh, 
come back and we'll try to get her running. In the meantime, I'm gonna order some parts like an oil filter, just some, some of those key kind of parts, see if I could, what I can find for brakes, um, etc. We'll get after it. All right, it's about that time. We're gonna try to get this baby running. Let's go check it out. I think I've shown you all this before. Um, now I don't know if this license plate is from this truck. It's screwed into the floor, so I don't think it probably is. Oh, that's really the only rust hole in the whole truck. Um, but I'm guessing it's the mid, mid, you know, late to mid, you know, early to mid 90s. Um, and I've been asking myself, like, why did this truck sit? You know, what, what happened? So I drained the gas out of it and it had about seven gallons of gas. If you remember, it had fresh tire chains on it. The rear tires were pretty new. It obviously was a plow truck based on the block heater and the plow mounts. I'm gonna cut all that stuff off by the way. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if I said this already, but man, amazingly, I was able to put about two bottles of brake fluid in this and cycle it through. Owen and I bled the brakes. And as of two days ago, it had functioning brakes. This switch was leaking, so uh, I ordered one of those. And just a quick shout out to Dan at Binder Boneyard, Eric, Bare Knuckle Binder. Those guys have been kind of a resource for me because I don't know these trucks very well. A long time ago, I had a 1960 with a similar engine. This is like, I think a B240. Um, so I don't know much about them, but we're just gonna go ahead and get her fired up. Um, let's check the oil. No water in it. It's still liquid. Smells like oil. I'm not gonna change it right away. I'm just gonna get it fired up and let it run a little bit. So let me run through kind of the, the procedure. First things first. This is actually the positive battery cable. I should have got a different one of those. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Um, but this negative cable is just thrashed. So I'm gonna replace those battery cables, take the air filter off, fill it full of fuel. I'm gonna replace, these are kind of a giveaway. I don't know if I said this already in the video, but um, these Wix filters, we're guessing are from like the late 90s, mid to late 90s. But I'm gonna replace the fuel filters, this rubber hose, pre-prime the fuel pump because I don't want it running dry and I hope I'm hoping the fuel pump works um, this is another interesting thing like these old distributors instead they do have vacuum advance but it's like an external so it actually rotates the whole distributor um, I do have points and uh, and tune-up parts so I'm gonna pull a plug and we'll check the plugs but yeah let's just start getting through her and my prediction it does roll over I confirmed that so I confirmed that so I'm gonna get going on the battery cable I'm gonna add a quart of oil and some engine conditioner uh, that it just I don't know should help I do have a valve cover I'm not gonna do that today my goal is just to get it started and then we'll see I did I did find this so it obviously had a, a coolant leak. It looks like they used Bondo. Oh, they used Bondo to patch a coolant leak, which is kind of ghetto, but spec. 
back in the day, man. Who knows what they had. So I don't know if you can even get a radiator for, th for this, but I did bring some water. We're currently in California. It doesn't freeze here. So it's pretty clean in there. So, oh man, this thing's like, again, it's in pretty, the clutch works. I confirmed that because I backed it off a trailer. I used the brakes and a combination of the clutch and it does have a clutch, does have brakes. Tires are holding air. And uh, we're gonna give her a shot, so let's get going. I'm super stoked on this truck though. And also, little quick note, so I live uh, near the coast. And since it's only been here a couple weeks, but it's turned from this kind of patina to this, and that scares me, it's kind of a bummer. It's just getting worse because I live near the ocean. So I am going to do a, a wipe on clear coat part of this process because I want to save the patina. I don't want it to degrade. I don't know what I was thinking, but I sprayed some like WD-40 on it just to stop it from flash rusting, but I'll just clean that off. But anyway, super sick truck. I do have a key, which I showed you before. Pretty killer. And I just got impatient. I just put a a battery in it. And look at that. That's a good sign. That's awesome. I knew this truck was awesome. And I uh, realized I forgot all my tools. So I have some stuff here, but I forgot all my tools. Got my electrical stuff. Um, so I might see if it'll just start, man. I'm gonna just sand the points real quick and uh, add some oil, add some water. We'll see what happens. What the heck? All right, I hooked up my mic. So let's add oil first. Scored some of this stuff. I don't know, I usually am a Lucas fan, but this stuff looks interesting. And I got some uh, classic car oil, 2050. I do have an oil filter and I'm, I want to change the oil, but there was no like real uh, evidence of like mice infestation. Like there's no chewed wires. I have to say Wyoming is a great climate, even though it snows there for vehicle preservation, both on the patina and on the mechanical bits. I actually think, I uh, mean, I, I think I should, I think I should go get my tools and at least spray some lubricant in the cylinders. But what do you think? I don't know. I'm impatient. Maybe I'll crank it for a little bit, let it build oil pressure. I'm going to add some water. Yeah, this thing, who knows? Maybe, you know, it could, be, it could have been fired up in the 2000s. The owner had passed away, so I don't really have information. But it had tire chains and had seven gallons of fuel. So I don't know. I mean, I think clearly something was wrong. Or... He got a new truck, you know, I don't know. Cause if you ever if you've ever plowed with an old manual tilt 
There's no hydraulics on it, so I don't know how you'd lift the plow. But it clearly has a plow mount on it. I don't see evidence of, you know, like sometimes there's a hydraulic pump, a secondary hydraulic pump. I don't see any evidence of that. It's taking a lot of water. It's not like savagely leaking out. And don't worry, I will. I'm going to end up probably sending this radiator out to get rebuilt. So I definitely will run proper coolant. I'm just going to hit the points real quick. Let's move the camera. The distributor is a little loose, so I'm guessing it's just got some play in it. And even though this thing only has 60, sixty thousand miles on it, they clearly were hard miles. Like, cause it it's lived on a ranch. You just look for the two contacts. Take the rotor off. They are opening and closing. I got some 600. I think that's a little too fine. And if I rotate the distributor with the vacuum advance. Give that a try. Took a little off. Cap looks good. It's pretty new actually. But I have no idea if the coil's good. I did order a coil. I don't have it yet, but I have points. So today's video or today's attempt, I think it's just gonna be just put some fuel in it. I literally have no tools. I think I'm gonna take a little 10 minute break and go get my tools. All right, so I got some tools. And I'm replacing this battery cable which hooks up to the exhaust manifold, which is a little weird. But look, at these are just like hand tight. I might, I'm gonna kind of go through and check all of them. See what I mean? I'm not gonna kill them tight, but. You know, and it's hard, man. Like, who knows how well or 
it looks like it was kept up on this truck, you know. Like this says rebuilt on it right there, the generator. This voltage regulator is clearly newer. You know, everything's like not terrible. So but anyway, I'm gonna replace those, those battery cables. As you can see, they're pretty toasted. They did work, but I'm gonna, uh, I don't wanna just rig it too bad. And I got my tools now, so keep going. Man, this looks like it's probably original. Just the way it's got like, I don't know. Is it an IH part number? Who knows? But it held up for a long time. What, 60 years or something? But you can see this one is real thin there. So. Good time to replace them. All right, so got the new cables. Both, it's just it's just the negative, which now it's annoying. I have two black battery cables, which is fine because it's all pretty obvious that that's the positive. But um, all right, hook the battery back up. Then I'm gonna do I'm gonna pull the plugs and just spray some lube in there and then and check the condition of the plugs. BT Dub guys, and uh, if you know of any emblems, like you can see the old A120, I'm missing that emblem. I have these two. I'm missing the A120. I'm missing this parking light lens. I'm missing this awesome. I did. I put a bid on one of those on eBay, but I'm missing this A120 and this International. So if you happen to have those emblems and want to. Uh, sell them to me. I'd be stoked. Alright, let's pull these plugs out. You know, and I may only have to pull one out and, and they look amazing and then you don't have to worry about it. These are old plug wires, man. I really should replace them, but um these plugs don't look super old and again like everything else on this truck and on this it's, it came out real easy okay got some ac delcos r45s no rust at all pretty carboned up like pretty bad so I'm going to hopefully pray that I ordered the right spark plugs let's check it out all right so here's the original r45 and I should have checked that part number and just BT dub man this is why you got to be careful I ordered these parts off of rock auto and I've found this consistently with older vehicles that the part numbers are just wrong. They're just not the right application. And that's why shopping through a specialty scout or light line dealer is important because typically we are doing that work for you, vetting out what is the right part numbers. But this is an R43S. I'm guessing it's just a different heat range. It's pretty much the same. So we're going to act like we gap them and then put them in and check this out I don't know why I thought this was a 57 but I just found this inside the truck international pickup three quarter ton four by four primer gray check and see how you get the blue confuser primer gray but if you look close that says 59 so I got to do some research on the uh, identification I, I, I thought it was a 57 but it's uh, obviously maybe a 59 I don't know how to tell the difference do you post it in the comments okay since I I'm just going to 
squirt this in there. I'm not going to go ham because I don't think it's that bad. But I'm just going to put a squirt in each one. And then I'll let it sit for 10 minutes and then I will. I'm going to leave the plugs out until. Be careful when you're doing plugs. One time I uh, had dropped a spark plug and I didn't notice that it closed the gap and I put it in the motor and then it was, you know, I was on this big trip and a couple hundred miles later. These plug wires feel sketch. Um, anyway, I discovered I was running on seven cylinders. Anyway, I'm going to get through this. You don't have to watch this. Uh, I'll be right back. All right, let me change the, yeah, I don't want to get PB Blaster shot all over the camera. But let's see what happens. Again, man, I'm, I know. Stoked. Made a bit of a mess, but that's all right. I don't mind lubing this thing up. Sounds like it has good compression too. So you know that old, uh, I don't know. I'm like have mixed emotions about the old adage like they don't build them like they used to because modern stuff is not fun. I don't love it, but it is. Uh, like my wife's 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee has 200,000 miles. We just hit 200K on it. And at like 190, we put brakes on it. So this thing, but so that said, this thing is built so substantially and I'm very impressed with just the build quality and the thoughtfulness of how it got put together. I'd way rather have this sucker and like working on scouts my whole life, there's so much room. This engine bay is awesome. The center nut is missing off the steering wheel. And I don't exactly know why. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna throw these plugs back in, throw the plug wires on it. Put, I'm going to change the fuel filters. I'll show you when I get started on that. Then we're, we're about 15 minutes, man. We should be able to fire this baby up. All right, I'm just going to test the key. Confirm that we got power on the test light. Key to the on position. Yep, we got voltage. It's exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bump it over. Or gas in the car. Oh no, I'm gonna be patient. No, I'm not. Yeah, I am. I'm just gonna change the fuel fuel lines and fuel filters. I'm getting excited though. Gotta be patient. All right. So new fuel filters, fuel hoses, coils got power. I'm going to go ahead and um, test bump this. Okay, we got crankage. Um, okay, I'm going to energize the key. J 
generator light is on. See what happens. Kind of nervous, but let's do it. Okay, I'm guessing it's not getting spark. I guess it's not getting spark. It's pretty quiet. Okay, let's let me clean the points again and uh I'm actually gonna yeah, I'm going to clean the points again and see if I'm getting sparkage down at the points. Let's see. I'm just gonna, the key is still energized. I'll hold on here. What's going on? That could be a very simple answer. Let me check and see why it's not. We just checked it and we had, maybe my ground is not good. Okay, now we have, uh, let me try it again. Now that I'm for sure got power. Let me see if the spark, the points are sparking. Might be still corroded. I'm going to just bump it. They're actually sparking. I know they're energized, but I think they're just dirty. The contacts are dirty. So, or we could have a bad coil and then we'll be out of business because I don't have a coil. Let me shut the key off. I think I have a better piece of sandpaper. Got some 220. This bumper is convenient. Let's try it one more time. Cause I was getting nothing. Let's, I'm gonna energize the ignition. Key on. Maybe it sounded like it was ga galloped a little bit. Okay, we have power.
close the choke. A little bit. Give it a little bit of non-starting fluid. Alright, let's see what happens. Man, it must be a bad coil. It's got to be either bad coil or bad spark plug wires. I'm going to go crank it from the inside and check the oil pressure. It's got a manual oil pressure gauge. The headlights. Let's see if the headlights work. Nope. I'm sure this thing is. Oh yeah. Look. It's pretty impressive. Windshield wipers work. Man, she just. Fuel gauge is not working. Okay, I think I'm going to call it a day. A little unvictorious. But I'm gonna, I have a, a coil, uh, I, I should be able to go buy a coil at the parts store. Let me check one more thing. I'm gonna pull off this plug. Get the butt shot. I'm going to check and see if this plug has spark. Yeah, I just confirm I, it's not getting spark. So, what I'm going to do is try to track down some spark plug wires and a coil. And we will. I'm kind of out of time today. But we will be back. Okay, so I just fiddled with some stuff and I bumped it over and I, I'm sorry if you missed it, but I shut it off immediately. Let's check this out. Oh, good. Now I got the bug. I want to. I don't know what I don't know what I did. All I did was take the coil wire. I loosened the the, the wire going to the points.
Let's see if it's gas. Woo! Yeah, dude. Sounded pretty good. It's not drawing fuel. I was hoping it'd start drawing fuel. Let me try to more carefully fill the float bowl. Oh, it's getting sparked, obviously. So quiet. I guess we'll just try it from right here. Sounds pretty good. Man, I was hoping the fuel pump, I was hoping that fuel pump would be good. It's definitely not, though, because, um, well, maybe it is, because the fuel in the bottom of the fuel pump, or sorry, the fuel in the bottom of the fuel filter, let's gas her up again, the old school way. I got to get one of those clear mustard bottles. Yeah, I made a commitment or a goal, set a goal to drive this thing a hundred yards over to my other yard. I gotta check the oil pressure. It sounds good, like the oil pressure. Oh, I'm pretty excited right now. Let's check the oil pressure. oil pressure gauge is working because it's but it because it's I think it would be clacking more if it didn't have oil pressure See if I could find a quart of oil. I'll be right back. Okay, check this out. I think the fuel pump's working. I'm gonna roll the choke off.
pretty stiff. We don't need to add a return screen. Listen to that baby purr for 30 years. It's got no mufflers, so that's straight, that's all straight pipe. Let's go check out. Oh man, I'm so stoked right now. Got a little oil pressure. I'm kind of a little concerned about the oil pressure. But it's got some, enough for me to drive it over to where I gotta drive it. Um, all right, I'm gonna just kinda clean up my stuff and I'm gonna drive it from there to there. So we'll show you when we're ready to drive it. All right, here we go. First drive in 30 years. I should have a fire extinguisher. I'm worried about the throttle sticking and I'm worried about it not having brakes. First gear, here we go. Woo Clutch feels really great actually. Oh, she's noisy. But I'm not sure if there's any kind of coolant or sorry, fluid in there. It was in four low. Pressure's still low. Stoked, mission successful from Gillette, Wyoming to California. She's running, she's driving. Now it's time to make it better. So if you want to see more videos on this truck, we got brakes, fuel, suspension, tune-up. I mean, we got so much work to do, but thanks for tuning in. See you next time on Scout Life.